Can the new M21 Vampire Silver Smote Ghoul team up with a forgotten Modern Horizons Uncommon and Smiting Helix to bring Dredge back to the forefront in Modern? Let's find out. All right, what is up, my friends? Welcome to another Monday video here on CoolStuffInc.com. I, of course, am Jim Davis. We're going to play some Modern today with a new core set 21 card and an old favorite, Silver Smote Ghoul. Um, is our somewhat innocent looking card from core set 2021. Three mana for a 3 1 vampire. It's also a zombie. Uh, beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, return Silver Smote Ghoul from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. And you can pay two and sacrifice it to draw a card. So looks like a life gain payoff card. You know, if we're limited, uh, maybe slight constructed applications with Soren, Imperious Bloodlord. Um, but we're going a little farther back than that. And we're looking at Silver Smoke Ghoul being a major enabler for the modern dredge deck that has long relied on Bloodguest. Uh, no more. No more. Different vampire in town here. Because of how well Silver Smoke Ghoul works with a Creeping Chill. So now the problem with Blood Gas, of course, is if you dredge a whole bunch of cards on turn two after playing your land, you can't play another land to bring back Blood Gas, therefore de delaying you for a turn to get back all your prized amalgams. Um, but with Creeping Chill, it all happens right away. Creeping Chill and Silver Smoke Ghoul, of course, playing very, very well together. And um, we also get a little help here, too, from uh, Modern Horizons Smiting Helix, a card that Saw a little bit of play in Mardu Pyromancer uh, for a little bit. Pretty interesting card here. Kind of a humorous riff on the fact that draining life in black is basically the same thing as lightning helix in red and white, uh, but always less efficient. So a very inefficient lightning helix in black and then a flashback for an actual lightning helix. And um, obviously flashback very good in the dredge deck. Deals the three damage we're looking for. Gains the three life we're looking for. Pretty nice little tool here. That uh, does spread us into four colors, but not really a problem with Gemstone Mine, City of Brass, Fetchlands, Life Malone, and so on and so forth. And of course, not necessary that we flash back Smiting Neelix. Otherwise, pretty standard looking dredge deck here. And of course, losing Faithless Looting was a pretty big blow to the deck. We still have our Shriek Horns, though. We still have our Cathartic Reunion, the best card in the entire deck. And we still have our Merchant of the Veil, which is our uh, <laughs> Faithless Looting Light, if you will. And of course, we have our new big payoff as well from Theros in Ox of Aganis, which is a, a huge dredge card from the graveyard. You get to escape it and basically dredge your entire deck. Very, very powerful tool here. Um, exiling eight cards, not too difficult once you've dredged once or twice. And once you get to discard your hand and draw three more cards, sort of like a breakthrough effect or a Cephalid Coliseum effect we see in Legacy to dredge your entire deck. So that's the main deck. Nothing crazy here. Cyborg, one of the benefits to playing white so we get a really good sideboard card here against combo decks in Deafening Silence. Dredge is a very powerful deck, but definitely a little slower than combo decks like Storm or Ad Nauseam and things like that. And Deafening Silence just shuts that all down. And uh, we don't care much about casting spells ourselves. And one mana is about as cheap as it gets, right? So Deafening Silence, awesome new sideboard addition from adding white. And then the usual stuff here, you know, Thoughtseize, uh, Lightning Axe, Ancient Grudge, Nature's Claim, all the usual tools we see in a dredge sideboard to help answer the sideboard hate that comes in against us. Now, this is a list that went 5-0 and in a Magic Online League played by a Magic Online user, uh, Scrone. So we're just going to play with this card for card and see how it goes and um, see if dredge still got it with a few new tools here, of course, at 2021 and Theros Beyond Death. But first, quick message from our sponsor here at CoolStuffInc.com. CoolStuffInc.com is offering Core Set 2021 pre-release packs with two free additional Core Set boosters. That's eight boosters and a foil rare or mythic promo for only $24.99 while supplies last. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. All right, here we are for match number one with our Dredge deck here. Now, uh, for those who are new at Dredge, Dredge definitely needs a specific formula for cards you need to have in your opening hand to be functional. You need two lands, uh, one of which is green, because having green for life malum is very, very important. We're going to want some sort of discard or dredge enabler, uh, cathartic reunion, uh, shriek horn, things like that, and a dredge card. So we can get our, our engine rolling here. There are a lot of redundant parts, 
that we don't necessarily need. And also, the London Mulligan is phenomenal for Dredge because a card like Narc Amoeba is worse in our hand than it would be in our deck. So there are scenarios where a five card hand would be better than a seven card hand because this hand would be much better if it was a six card hand and this card was in the bottom of our library. So London Mulligan is phenomenal for Dredge. And this is a pretty clear Mulligan here because our hand doesn't really do anything. So take a Mulligan into another hand that doesn't actually do anything. Uh, again, Creeping Chill, not a card you want in your opener and no discard outlets, no dredge cards. Pretty bad, pretty bad. So pretty easy chance to go to five or go to five here. Wow, uh, pretty gross hand so far. So now this hand does have a, a backdoor way to discard. We can play Conflagrate for one, X equals zero. And uh, then flash it back to just discard cards again in the graveyard, but that's also really slow. And um, we don't have two untapped lands. So we can't even Conflagrate then Conflagrate for flashback, then start dredging. And we want to have some way to get the dredge train going. So we're, we're going to log into four here. Um, any hand of land, land, cathartic, dredger is the nuts, basically. So we're looking for that. Man, rough start. Rough start. Um, on four, and again, our hand is uh, non-functional. Um... Only one land, you know, which is against our two land paradigm. We do have uh, a life Malone we can just hard cast. Uh, but realistically, our hand's pretty bad here. Um, we're not really doing anything. However, going down three is pretty low. Um, we are on the draw. So we could just keep this hand and try and draw land number two for life Malone. Um, question being, is that better than a possible three card hand that could be like land land tree corn? or something like that. I think on the draw it is. Um, so we're going to be drawing to 18 lands, four street corns, two haggles. Uh, that's mostly it. But we're going to we're gonna keep this. I wouldn't necessarily begrudge anyone for mulling this hand, but uh, we're going to keep it. So we're going to put a lot of these cards back into our deck. Um... We're keeping land, loam, with no way to discard. Man, this is tough. This is tough. Let's put the the ox back in for sure, because you would love to hit an ox after dredge every dredge for a little bit. I guess one of the amalgams. Um, keeping conflict rates pretty loose. But keeping these is also pretty loose too. Kind of just want everything in our deck. It's like, like we were saying earlier. Maybe we should have just gotten a three, honestly. Um, this hand's pretty bad. Keeping Conflagrate is... I mean, Conflagrate is good with Life Malone. If we get that going. I'm just at the Amalgam. Alright, so... Certainly not a good hand. So we're not a good hand. Basic planes. Interesting. So we have two draws here to find our land, and again, or hopefully find a, a Shriekhorn or some sort of action haggle. Creeping chill, not what we're looking for. Uh, not what we're looking for. Let's see what they do here. Gemstone mine. All right, this looks like it's going to be an Ad Nauseam deck. Yeah. There's also merit to just conceding when you're playing Dredge to hide what you're doing. Um, they kept a seven-card hand. They had Pentad Prism. I think there's almost no chance you win this game. We're going to untap. We're not going to fetch. We're going to untap. Draw a card. It's not a land. We're just going to concede. We have a Scalding Tarn in play. We look like a frustrated player. They have no idea what we're playing, and they're probably going to board incorrectly, so we're just going to concede this game. They're playing Ad Nauseam. We have our information. Um, we are very unlikely to beat them, given the, the context of this game in our hand. So I guess we could have like, said go and kept playing. Yeah, it might have been better, actually. But we're pretty sure they're playing Ad Nauseam. I, I should have just said go and basically made no plays or revealed any information until they revealed their information. Uh, but we're pretty sure they're playing Ad Nauseam, and for the sake of brevity... We'll, uh, we'll just get, get moving here. So 
they have no idea what we're doing. We played a Scalding Tarn, and uh, they could think we're a blue deck. Um, things like that. So we're going to bring in our Deafening Silences for sure. And some number of Thoughtseize. We don't want to crazy. You can't really overboard with Dread. It's very important to keep the, the main function of your deck functional. Um, usually wanted to shave pieces. Can't really cut any dredge cards. I mean, Dark Blast is not great, but you can shave one dredge card. You can shave a Smiting Helix, shave an Ox. Conflagrate. Um, I mean, it can be a way to finish him off, but kind of wanted to shave that too. Um, we got to cut one more card. We can cut like a Silver Smoke Ghoul or... Uh, a narco amoeba. Treehorn thought sees. I think cutting smiting he looks also kind of fine, honestly. Keeping chill is damage, yeah. Smiting helix is not gonna help us go fast. We want to go fast and disrupt. That's our goal here, so. We're on the play. Uh, I might consider bringing in the third thoughts he's on the draw, but I think on the play I want to be a little more straightforward. So, all right. So, going first for game two here, and we have another stinker. Uh, again, this is a hand that would be better if these cards were just in our deck. So, and it just doesn't have anything going on. So, no, no dredge card. Has lands, has a haggle, but no dredge card. So, I'm all again. again. And this hand has. It's got stuff. It's got Shriekhorn, Merchant, and Stinkweed in. Uh, unfortunately, we have two cards you want in our deck again. It's also a one lander, which is pretty bad. Uh, typically, we want to have more than one land in our opener. But turn one Shriekhorn, mill two, upkeep, mill two, Merchant, Stinkweed Imp. Gives us a pretty decent set of dredging to start. The fact that he mulliganed into Oblivion and never cast a spell in game one is also weighing on my mind a little bit. I'm going to keep this. Uh, I'm going to bump the Creeping Chill. I don't love it, but... It's got, like, just enough, I think, with two one-mana enablers and our best possible dredge card. So... All right, so City of Ass, Shriekhorn. We're gonna do this on our turn, because if we hit exactly Creeping Chill, sm Silver Smoke Ghoul, uh, the Silver Smoke Ghoul only works on our turn. So, oh, we hit a Creeping Chill. Did not hit the Silver Smoke Ghoul, but... Lightning Helix, oh my god! Definitely would prefer to hit the Creeping Chill, uh, you know, later. Because obviously now we're down a chill for our Silver Smotes, but... Temple of Enlightenment. So yeah, definitely an Ad Nauseam deck. Probably not a great matchup for us, because frankly they just... Deny us the ability to deal damage to them and then combo pretty reasonably fast, but... Alright, it's so upkeep, Shriekhorn. Hitting <laughs> No! Alright, uh, hit our sideboard card. Uh, still upkeep, we're gonna haggle. Because we wanna be able to use our draw step to dredge if possible. Dredge five. We get Amalgam, Thought Seize, nothing. Man. Not a, not a great sequence. We did, we did draw land number two. Which is like, not the worst, but uh... Pretty bad start for us. I would say we're probably not in good shape here. Definitely possible we should have just gone to five. Um, Another Pentad Prism, sure.
Definitely their, uh, aside from Lotus Bloom, one of their ideal accelerators. We'll just get Stomping Ground. The City of Rest taps for everything anyway, so. All right, we're going to untap and upkeep. We're going to Shriek Horn ourselves, try and find Dredge Garden. Uh, we've got an Ox. That, that, that works. So, uh, Dredge Loam. And we're going to ship the Ox here and just try and dredge a bunch of cards and put as much, much pressure in play as possible. Um, casting Loam, which is not efficient enough. Some matchups you, you, you would want to do that, but not this one. we got to really just go here. So we're going to do that. We're going to Ox. Exiling. Deafening Sounds. Oh, is your spells first? Things you can't recur, not lands or creatures. Four, five, and then we got to hit lands. Six, seven. All right, so Ox comes in, triggers prized amalgam. Discard our entire hand and then draw three so we can dredge a bunch of cards. Dredge Synchrony for five. Dredge Loam for three. And dredge Loam for three. All right, so we've hit a Creeping Chill and a Silver Smoke Ghoul. The Chill will trigger the the Silver Smoke. So we put a decent amount of power in play here. Um, we've got 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 power. So we are, uh, you know, uh, one Creeping Chill away from winning the game here. But unfortunately, we're also out of Dredge cards again. We do have another Ox, though. So we can kind of, we can probably kill them next turn. We've already used two chills, right? But I believe there's a chill on the, no, we, we, we shuffled, never mind. So there was a chill on the bottom, but we shuffled it back in, so. All right, so pressure's on them to, to combo probably this turn, honestly, or have Angel's Grace or um, Phyrexian on life to not die. And they're in the tank. In the tank. So, not a great draw on our part, um, but definitely fine. One black in the pool for Spoils of the Vault. Choose a card name, reveal cards, top of your library to you, reveal the name of that game, it was one life for each card. All right, go nuts. This is also part of their combo with Angel's Grace and Thassa's Oracle. Or you can spoils, play Angel's Grace, and then just get that as Oracle, empty your entire deck. You just gotta have the Oracle too, and name, you name a card that's not in your deck, but. Definitely not a fair magic card in any sense of the word. Um, no one's put this card in their deck without very mean intentions before. But they seem unsure about what they're getting. Usually when you cast spoils of the vault, you just Yeah, you know what you, you know what you're getting. So what is the answer here? Are they gonna risk it and name Frexian on life and just try and uh, buy a turn or two? Always a, always a sweat. Always a sweat. It's a good time to remind everyone that uh, every video I do here for CoolStuffInc.com has a companion article with it. Hop on over to CoolStuffInc.com proper if you're watching this on YouTube and uh, check out the article. I always do an article with each video, so a little, little, little bit about the deck and uh, a little more extra information. Of course, I do these video articles every Monday on CoolStuffInc.com, as well as my full written articles every Friday. And they named Phyrexian on life. Okay, so and they only have four cards. So pretty fortunate not to lose so much life there. And uh, last Friday's article was all about Jumpstart and the cards that are being added to Historic on Magic Arena. So they play Phyrexian on life. Now we have to kill them twice, basically. Um, 
They're at 11, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have one swing this turn and one swing next turn. But if they have the card Ad Nauseam in their hand, we're just dead. Because uh, they can cast Ad Nauseam with Unlife in play, not die, draw their whole deck, and so on and so forth. So we're going to draw here. Just think we'd imp. Uh, I think drawing our case copy of Deafening Silence is probably the ideal scenario there, but we're just going to pop off here and just give it, give them the ox and just hope they don't have it, basically. We don't really have any recourse. Um, we do have one copy of Thoughtseize and one copy of Deafening Silence. We could try and draw naturally, but that would require drawing yeah, a, a white or black mana source and the spell, which is extremely unlikely. So I think we're just going to pop off on the ox and try and get it done here. Hope this was a desperation on life, not a combo on life. So science, cathartic, narco, and land, 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 land. All right, so another ox, discard our hand, dredge five, Dredge 5. Dredge 3. Oh, we found our prize amalgams. Another Creeping Chill. I guess we should have attacked first. Hmm. Because now... I mean, the Chill would have given them 3 Infect. I guess it doesn't really matter. There's a million things in play anyway, but... I think it just comes down to literally do they have it or not next turn. So they have ad, they have the card ad nauseum, or if they have another another spoils of the vault and um, uh, a Thassa's oracle, we are dead. Not bad for turn four. We do have like you know twenty four power in play or whatever, but. Question being, of course, will it be good enough? Will it be good enough? So I was saying in the uh, in the deck tech, you know, definitely combo decks like this are good against Dredge because they can ignore the large amount of power Dredge is capable of putting in play. And even though Dredge usually kills you on turn four or five, it's often not fast enough for combo decks that can kill on turn three or four. So often a turn slow. And we do have our cool interactive sideboard cards, but didn't find any of those. And one of the things about Dredge is you never really draw cards. So if the, the hate card's not in your opener, you're usually, usually not going to find it. So yeah, they should be at negative one and three poison. Again, I don't think that's going to matter. So We shall see. Two black. All right. I mean, it looks like they have ad nauseum, but it's taking a long time to do it. So, they get one poison counter from their city of breasts. Right, well, there it is. So we're dead. So, um, yeah, I mean, definitely not a great first match here. Obviously, we mulligan into oblivion in game one. And then uh, game two, maybe we could have gone to five. Um, maybe I was a little gun shy because I mulliganed a million times. Just didn't want to mulligan into oblivion two games in a row. Which is not entirely rational, but... Get a look at their deck here. Yep, they brought in Bale Summer. So... We, we got them basically with our, our early concession in game one. Um, yeah, they brought in Veil of Summer. They, not, they brought in not only the, the not, not only did they not bring in cards that might be good against us, but they brought in cards that are actively not good against us because we played a Scalding Tarn and said go. So our early concession, you know, our strategic concession definitely worked out. Uh, but unfortunately, you lose the games you strategically concede. And uh, this game, they just killed us in turn four. So... Definitely could have gone to five, maybe this game. Say lobby, say lobby. Tough first match. Tough first match. Definitely not a not a great matchup for us.
All right, round number two, and the, the good hands just keep on coming. Uh, another completely unplayable hand here. So we're going to mulligan again, which is fine. I mean, the dredge is a deck that mulligans a lot, so not really too big of a deal. Um, going to five, no problem. Okay, so we have a functional hand. Um, again, this is a spot where a five-card hand is actually actively better than a seven-card hand. Because you want these narcos back in the deck. Uh, we have no dredge card, but we do have Shriekhorn and we are on five cards. And we also have a merchant too. So we're, we're going to keep this hand. It's obviously not a great hand. We're going to be leaning on our Shriekhorn a little bit here. But we'll get to see four cards off the top of our deck as well as a draw step or two to try and find a, a dredge card. So first ball up is Copper Line Gorge. Um... And we're going to want to shuffle away the the narcos back into our deck so we'll just get the uh just get a black source here in blood crypts play shriekhorn and let it ride versus tower go looks more like eldrazi tron than regular tron because the regular tron would never keep seven and not have a turn one play unless they were totally rolled up which is possible but oh god i should have horned on our turn that was a mistake because we had exactly Silver Smote and the thing. Wow. A little karma for our luck here. We hit the end step Narc Amoeba prized amalgam. Like the, the, the best possible. Um, putting four power in play on turn one in our dredge deck. We didn't hit a dredge card. But it's hard to get much better than this. This is also why you do things on your opponent's second main. Not on the end step. Because if prized amalgam triggers on their end step... It'll come back on the next end step being my end step at the end of my turn, and that's not where we want to be. Upkeep, we're going to tree corner ourselves, revealing Stinkweed at Forgotten Cave. So we're running a little better now. We're running a little better. Um, we're just going to fire up the dredge here on Stinkweed. We hit a Creeping Chill and a Silver Smote Ghoul. Now, we're actually going to respond to this Creeping Chill trigger. This doesn't actually matter, right? The Silver Smoke Ghoul isn't triggered, just checks at the end of turn. And then Prize the Amalgam will also come back at the end of turn. Um, we have an Ox too, but not enough to use it. Okay, yeah, so this is fine. I don't see a reason to, to dread to response to the Scraping Chill. All right, so I think we actually have anything we should play Scalding Tarn and Fetch to increase our odds a little bit of better of better dredge. So we're going to have no plays out of the graveyard anyway or anything like that, so let's uh, get no reason to reveal. I see actually we, we, we do want the white land in case we find Spiting Helix, so let's get Sacred Foundry tapped and then Haggle. We could just grab a Silver Smoke Ghoul um, and then dredge the Loam to give us more power. I kind of don't hate that, actually. And then just dredge three instead of dredge five. And this just ensures us three, three more power. They're at 17. We're attacking for four. That puts them at 13. And then we'll have two Silver Smotes, which is 10. So then one more Creeping Chill or Smiting Helix will kill them. Barring them playing like Worm Coil next turn or something. Yeah, I'm actually going to just grab a Silver Smoke Ghoul. Dredge Lum, hit basically nothing. Hit a Stinkweed Imp, which isn't bad. All right, so move to combat, attack for four. They go to 13, double Google comes back. Now we have 10 power in play and they're at 13, so. All right, so yeah, they just had, had, had rolled up Tron. Again, We're not sure if they're regular Tron or Aldrazi Tron yet. I would assume that I would assume that either, either deck would have had a play by now. But all right, natural Tron, natural Tron, just a little modern happening here. Just a little modern. Looks like they're thinking of what to play. So Karn, the Great Creator. Well, that does turn off our Shriekhorn temporarily, and they can get like a Tormod's Crypt or something like that. But I don't think this is that bad. We already have all our power in play, so unless they have like Ugin or some sort of like big wipe as well, 
relic. Sure, it's better than Tormod Scroats. So they relic, they relic everything. We still have to end power and play. We still get to Shriek Horn ourselves on our upkeep. And see if we can't finish him off. All we need is a, a Smiting Helix or a Creeping Chill, which we have three chills and two Helix left. So here it is. Oh, never mind. I can't Shriek Horn. <laughs> oh, passive abilities. Somebody please go erase War of a Spark from Magic. Draw Cathartic. Well, that's even better. So we'll just do that instead. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think we're pretty favored to hit a shell here. We're going to do this first because we need to know how many shells we hit. Maybe if we need to attack this card or not. So Dredge 5. Dredge 5. Dredge four. And there are your creeping chills. Four lethal. Turn three kill. That's what happens when you get really, really lucky and spike the narco and the amalgam off the shriek horn. Funny enough, I don't think we actually know if they're playing Aldrazi Tron or regular Tron yet. Um, so <laughs> kind of interesting. Uh, I imagine our sideboarding is definitely a little different versus each. Um, we definitely want Thought Seize, I think. Oh, it's bad against Chalice, but... And then... Ancient Grudge or Nature's Claim. I mean, against regular Tron, if you're desperate, you can bring Claim on the play and try and spike their map before they can use it, but... Not ideal. Grudge is good against Worm Coil Engine. So I don't hate that. Um, I definitely love the idea of just shaving again. <laughs> Shave an Ox, shave a Helix... A shape of Dark Blast isn't very good. And again, if we knew they were Eldrazi Tron, I think I would bring in the Lightning Axes, but we don't. And I think Thought Seize is like a safer middle ground. Uh, it's certainly much better against regular Tron than Eldrazi Tron, but it's still a card. We could also just bring in two and hedge a little bit. Uh, we're not really sure what's happening exactly. Um, I don't hate this. Again, you really want to avoid over sideboarding with Dredge if possible, so let's try this. Let's see what happens when they don't have just, you know, straight natural Tron and get a little more information about their deck. All right, Mulligan again. Um, not a great hand. Not a great hand. We're looking for speed here. And um, our opponent kept seven again, which makes me lean more towards Eldrazi Tron because regular Tron mulligans more than we do. Um, this hand doesn't really do much. We have no way to draw cards um, or dredge, like turbo dredge more than just our draw step. Um, Loam is good. This hand will be fine in some matchups where you can just like lean on Loam and kind of like grind him out, but it's not a grind him out matchup. We're going to log in again. Um, this hand is significantly better. We're going to keep this and ship Narc Amoeba. And I think Ancient Grudge. We just need to have our Cathartic, our Dredge card, our two lands. And having, I'd rather have a, another enabler than this Ancient Grudge. So pretty good five card hand. Pretty good five card hand. Turn one relic. All right, so turn one relic is obviously pretty good, but the horn helps us out a lot here because we can sort of like slowly work our way through and not commit completely. Um, yeah, and we're gonna copper line gorge. A fetch land would insulate us against the first activation of relic. But there's no point letting them get an activation off at this point, I don't think. So we can just wait. All right, so they are Eldrazi Tron. And there's Expedition Mass. So they're going to go real slow here. Tree Corn ourselves. Creeping Chill and 
Forgotten Cave. Okay, so we lose our cave, which is fine. Untap. Upkeep. I'd love to hit a dredge card here. Amalgam Thoughtseize. Okay. Draw Bloodstained Mire. So, not great. Now, it's pretty hard to go for a big cathartic here. Because obviously they would just exile the graveyard. We want to like small ball if possible, but we're not really finding the tools to do that yet. Um, we can just hope that our next tree corn hit is a dredge card or a card that returns prized amalgam and use the fetch land to insulate against relic a little bit. Uh, if we go for the cathartic here, we get to dredge some cards, but we don't really have a backup plan. Our backup plan is just to hope this three corn for one hits post relic, which I don't really like very much. Um, we'll definitely force him to pop the relic. We're also in Thought Not Seer territory too now, though. They can guess Thought Not next turn. Maybe we should just go for it. We're going to get a black land too because actually just casting creatures is pretty good against them. Stinkweed Imps is surprisingly effective. All right, we're going to cast Cathartic Union and we're going to take it slow. One dredge at a time. Let's see what we're thinking here. All right, so first dredge is four. Hits a Narc Amoeba, a Life from Alum. Um, so as of right now, they have to relic us or we get back our amalgam. Um, Loam doesn't have a ton of value. I think I like just drawing two cards and trying to set up for the post relic world because they're probably going to relic us. Um, we have a thug. We now need to find a way to discard it and kind of keep going. So I'm going to take a, draw, a regular draw here. That's bad. Now we have two fetch lands in our hand. So loam looks a little more appealing. Um, so we'd have loam in our hand. They relic and we end up with two lands, loam, thug in our hand, three corn on one and two lands in play. Um, so the question is, is Loam better than a random draw here? Whereas our good draws are Merchant, Cathartic. That's mostly it. Yeah, we're going to do a Loam. And we get an Ox and two Cathartics. So they're going to pop the Relic here for sure. No. Wow. Showing great discipline. Okay, so we get a, a Narco and an Amalgam, which is really good for us because um, now if we just play this Thug as a blocker and now the Narco dies, the Thug dies. What? Why give us a free 1-1? One, one, one? An interesting choice, but sure. All right. I mean, I, I thought they were going to Relic, but sure. All right, so they have Tron in a bit. All right, big hit here on the upkeep Shriekhorn. Thug Shriekhorn, okay. Dredge Thug. Hit Silver Smote, Stinkweed Imp, Prized Amalgam. So no, no way to get anything back yet, but we do get to at least fetch some lands out and cast Loam, do some stuff. Again, we're in a spot where the thug thug's in play ability is actually very relevant because if we just cast the thug and block with it and the narco, put the narco on top, then dredge and get back our amalgam and so on and so forth. So we've got uh, we still have 
three chills and a helix in our deck. As well as three narcos too, right? Two narcos. All right, so they're gonna get Tron, which is fine, I guess. Tap five and play Karn the Great Creator. Okay. This game might be a bit out of reach here. Tormod script. Haters. So deciding when to crypt. I think letting us dredge is fine, honestly. So Karn is a minus two to get like a worm coil engine or a ballista, which is pretty hard to beat. Um Stretch the Imp. Hit creeping chill and smiting helix. But they're smart though we will crypt this in response to the creeping chill and get rid of everything, which is annoying, but sure. Yep. All right, so that's two pieces of graveyard hate that have hit us so far. And we just cast the Snake Weed Imp. Let's go. Attacking Karn. I mean, if they just minus Karn and get like a Worm Coil, we, I guess we can, we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep battling, honestly. We got Snake Weed Imp still. Gonna keep open the window of our exiled cards so we can keep, uh, keep track of our outs. Still six cards in hand, too. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> and the scavenger grounds. All right. Graveyards. Got it. Don't got any graveyards. Maze Mind Tomb. New card here. All right. They got a map for Bajuka Bog, too. Uh, they're going to plus targeting nothing. Okay. Turn could have been worse, I suppose. And get blood crypts. All right. I mean... We're certainly on the uh, the bad draft deck plan. That's actually a pretty good draw, realistically. Let's fire that off to see what's up. Play some fair magic. Just cast creatures and play thought seizes, you know? Their hand is Blast Zone, Eldrazi Temple, Wastes. Swing and a miss, I suppose. All right. Um, attack Karn. I should attack for us to draw a card, maybe. Does that make sense why they would do that there? But sure. All right, Thug Life. I'm just gonna cast one. So they have the uh, the Blast Zone, I guess. I don't know. Gonna get another land. I've got plenty of those.
versus Tower. You got it. Drawn cards. Only have seven cards in hand, so. Blast zone, sure. Reality Smasher, sure. <laughs> okay, Graph Digger's Cage, sure. So the fourth piece of Graveyard Hate, we understand. So no blocks. Plus Karn. Does feel like we're fighting a bit of a losing battle here, but sure. Leap back, think we'd have to block the Reality Smasher. Play Thug, play Shriekhorn. Um, we can still Creeping Chill them through uh, Graph Digger's Cage. Can't do our Narco Thug trick anymore, but Oh, the awesome power of Matter Shaper. We have, what, two chills left? Spatial Contortion, the Stink Weed Imp. Why do they have Spatial Contortion in their deck? Hmm. I think this game's uh, all, all over, but for the crying folks. Dredge think we didn't. Silver Smote Amalgam, sure. Cast think we didn't. Attack with Narco Amoeba. Draw the last card off Tome, sacrifice it, gain four life, sure. Oh god. Alright, so pretty tough game there. They only played Tormod Script, Relic of Progenitus, Graph Digger's Cage, and Scavenger Crowns. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Game three on the play. Um, and now we're, now we got to sideboard properly. We know we're not playing regular Tron, so take these out. Um, Burning the Grudge. Lightning Axe. I mean, it's good against the creatures, but they're not going to play them early. And then Nature's Claim. I'm kind of about Nature's Claim. They showed so many pieces of hate. I also don't hate the Blast Zone either. Blast Zone is a nice way to beat Graph Digger's Cage because you can still dredge Loam and cast Loam. Bring the Blast Zone and they cut like... Let's 
something. Ox, Complegrate, Smiting Neelix. Let's bring one claim. So you have a claim, a grudge, and the Blast Zone to deal with uh, all of their stupid hate cards. You can also just like, you know, have a good draw. Put six power and play on turn two or something like that, you know? That's fine too. Uh, not this hand, nope. So no uh, no card draw spell. So that one's not going to work. Mulligan. Uh, basically the same hand. We're going to mulligan again. Cathartic Green is the best card in the deck by a lot, and we have not seen very many copies of that card in all of our opening hands across all of our mulligans. Turn 2 Cathartic is just the, the baseline where we want to be in every, every single game. In the tank here, this is definitely one of the important phases of the game. You're playing against Dredge or you're playing with Dredge is the mulligan phase. Got to make sure you have a hand that has proper functionality as well as a hate card, perhaps. Pawn mulligans to six. We're happy to mulligan to five. And again, no dredge card. Realistically, we just like can't keep this hand. I mean, we don't have anything. We've got four lands, a card we want in our deck, and no dredge card. No, no nothing. We're gonna mulligan again. All right, on four, and this hand is certainly close. We have a land and a cathartic and a loam. Problem is we don't have land four, obviously. Or land land two, I mean, and we're on the play. We can merchant and try and find it, I guess. Yeah, we're, we're gonna keep this, obviously. Uh, I think we ship the Grudge, Amalgam, and Silver Smote. And we're just gonna haggle away the loam on turn one and probably not dredge. Just try and find ourselves. A uh, a land number two for cathartic if we can. I mean, even in that case, we can't even cast a cathartic then. Oh man, this is bad. We're not gonna have cards in hand. Oh boy, rough start to this league. Let me tell you. So, maybe we just don't haggle. Yeah, haggling seems bad. We'll just try and draw, naturally draw land. If I haggle, then I can't cast Cathartic next turn. We don't have cards in our hand, so. All right, big draw here. Oh, yeah, never, never didn't have it. It's not a great Cathartic. It's only dredge for three, but... It's got potential. All right, got to hit a dredger here. We hit one. Hit another one. All right. Um, Could have been better. Could have been better. Now we have... <laughs> Cathartic reunion off the top, please. No. All right. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna shriek horn. Main phase it. I guess main phasing it. But doesn't play. Yeah, we're gonna, we're not gonna. If our top two cards are exactly creeping chill and a silver smoke, we'll so be it. Just say go. Just if they play another hate card, we get to decide what we want to do. Yeah. All right, so at the end, draw on double map, set up Tron. We're going to hit Thug, Silver Smoke, Ghoul. All right, that's a start. Um, I 
Would we rather horn first or dredge first? I think we just we could just think we have oh, instinct, 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 we didn't. Nope, two lands. Good for Loam though. Dredge Thug hit Creeping Chill. That's a start. That'll get back the Silver Smoke Ghoul. All right, we're putting making some progress here. Get back Copper Line Mire. Get back some lands. Let's play Copper Line now. And we got a board. They have Tron again. I guess like after they sack their land, so not ideal, but we've lost. That's what we've lost so far. We can sack the silver smote to uh to, to dredge also, which is kind of cute. All right, they find Ursus mine. They can play Tron. What do they got with five mana here? Karn, the great creator. Okay. I mean, what are they going to get? Get a Tormod script. So that's like fine. We get to just kill Karn here. All right, so untap, stretch law. Maybe. I'd be very happy if they crypted us here. All right, they're not going to. So dredge law. Mesa blast zone stink we him. So we can actually sack the silver smoke to dredge if we like in response to a crypt if we want to. It doesn't really do much though. Um, Let's tack. Attack Karn, attack them. All right, and probably just start by casting life from alone. Starting Blast Zone, Arid Mesa, Bloodstained Mire. All right, so they give me those lands back, sure. And so we just play Thug and say go. Next turn, we just naturally dredge five and see what happens. You have a Shriek Horn activation too, so. They do have Tron, so they have a bajillion mana. Thought not Seer is whatever. Take one of our Loams, no big deal. Honestly, just drawing Stinkweed Imp is pretty good. Oh, God. Yeah, that's pretty good. Ballista, kill Silver Smoke Ghoul. All right, untap, dredge five. We hit a Conflagrate. That's kind of cute. That might might entice them to Tormod script in our draw step, which they will. Um, that's fine. So that happens. Now I think we Shriekhorn ourselves and look to cast Life from Alone and Stinkweed Imp.
Amalgam Stomping Ground also makes our Narcan Red Thug interaction work too. So let's go get our. Uh oh, the Foundry got milled. I don't know if I have any lands left. Um, I do. I have a Stomping Ground. That's unfortunate. Oh, I have Blood Group too. All right. Get a shock. I'm gonna loan back these two. Hardcast Stinkweed him. And just say go. Because now if the thug and the market the narco die, we put the, the narco on top and dredge loam and do some stuff like that. That's pretty good. Fortunately, Ballista will probably be able to check this Stinkweed Imp for probably long enough. I think we can win this game if they don't play any more Graveyard Hate cards. Um, Batter Skull is pretty good too, but... Dredge Life Malone. Hit a Narco. That's pretty good. So that's two Amalgams. It's not bad. We gotta beat this Batter Skull somehow. Is our, our our Ancient Grudge is still alive. It's still somewhere in there. Um, we have... We milled the Stomping Grounds. So and now our Fetch Lands are dead. Our Fetch Lands no longer get anything back. Which is kind of lame, but... Um, start working on this blast zone too. Mm -hmm. has gone too, so we just say go here. Start pumping the blast zone up. Obviously, popping it on five is pretty good. Although I guess they have infinite mana to recur batter skull. I don't think I've ever worked so hard in a game magic. Now we're tapping 10 mana. 11 mana. 10 mana. 9 mana. 8 mana. 7 mana. 5 mana. 2 mana. 0 mana. Oh, not matter or shaper. Anything but matter or shaper. Oh no. Opponent taps ten mana. Cast matter or shaper. All right, cool. So let's pump this blast zone up by two. I'm just gonna cast Loam just to dredge. That's fair. I was kinda hoping someone would die in combat, honestly, but. Let's draw a Silver Smote Ghoul. Alright, I mean, sure. I don't know if. Let me just cast the Loam. Our clock is starting to be an issue too here. Pump a list of twice also. This is gonna be a challenging game to win. They're gonna put their blast zone on three. Which would kill my stinkweed amp and the amalgams and the silver smoke ghoul. Could be a problem. Could be a problem. Okay. If I had left mana up, I could have sacrificed the Silver Smote to Dredge, but... 
Uh, I think we're just dead though. They can just now they can just pump Ballista a couple times. They have another Smasher. All right. Looks like our opponent might have taken the day here. All right, you win. All right, so pretty tough match there. I mean, they had about four individual pieces of graveyard hate in every game, um, which is a pretty ridiculous amount to have to fight through. Um, almost got there. Definitely almost got there, but not quite. Not quite. So rough start to the league. Obviously, we've um, had some rough games. We might get a four that game too, right? So like, you know, Mulligan of four, a billion pieces of graveyard hate, still almost win. But yeah, definitely, Um, you know, you when you're playing Dredge, you are a little bit at the mercy of your opponent's sideboard. If your opponent really wants to beat you, they can um, in basically any scenario. Um, I did 5-0 with this deck on stream two days ago. And obviously now it looks like we're just getting smushed. But, um, you know, definitely not a great start so far. A combination of uh, a lot more Mulligans than usual. The deck definitely Mulligans often. But not to four every game, you know, and then a lot, a lot, a lot of graveyard hate. Also a bad match from that first match too, so. Okay, um, we can keep this hand. It sucks as I would prefer it was six card hand, but I think with Haggle and Stinkweed Imp and Life Malone, we can keep this hand. I'll put it also against the six, so. We are missing looting a bit. This is a looting, this hand's insane, uh, but. Makes her hand a bit worse, but Life Malone is going to be clutch here. It's, it's uh, very, very good in these kind of grindy matchups. Just kind of like keep dredging and making land drops and looking for our oxen and stuff like that. So Makes her hand worse, but definitely feels like a good matchup. Just going to get our stomping ground. So play Bloodstained Mire. Godless Shrine, so Orzov something. Stoneforge Mystic. Anafenza Kin Tree Spirit. Okay. Um usually a card played in combo decks. Some sort of combo deck here. I don't know what's going on. All right, we're gonna fetch again. So let's get a regular mountain. Try and control our life total a little bit here. Cast Lom. Let's see you go. What's up? And fancy kin tree spirit. Safe hold elite. Yeah, some sort of persist sacrifice like Yagmoth combo probably. Alright, so they bolster attack for three. Uh don't have a land though. So I believe they're gonna try and Yagmoth combo us. Uh we'll dredge three. We get a Creeping Chill and a Silver Smoke Ghoul. We like that. Probably need more than that to uh, take this game, but... Um... I mean, our hand is pretty mopey. We can just, like, fetch land here, and then cast Loam again, and then... Try and get things going. Let's get our Sacred Foundry. Might as well just tap it. And then... Low him back. Puts us two enough cards in hand to discard our Stinkweed Imp, which is a nice little extra value there, but not a very explosive hand from us. Um, our hand was already a little sketch, and the turn one discard spell certainly hurt it. Altar of Dementia. All right, so now they can uh, they can deck us. So we have been three card comboed. So they can persist, bolster on the persist creature. 
with a plus one plus one counter, and then infinitely mill our entire deck. Which uh humorous because if if they were at um if they were at nine or less life, we would just kill them with creeping chills, but they are not. So we are going to concede and not show them our entire deck. So and that's all turn four combo there. That's pretty fun. But uh so we're gonna bring in some stuff. They're playing white. They can't have rest in beast because it would break their combo up, which is good for us. Um, let's take out dark blast, an ox, a smiting helix. We're gonna want to bring in probably lightning axe and maybe blast zone. Um, they're black white. I suppose we can just like cut a fetch land. For the blast zone, it does hurt our mana like a little bit, but um, you could also see cutting Merchant of the Veil because we are bringing in our Lightning Axe to serve a similar purpose, but I think this is fine. Nah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna cut a Merchant. Merchant's like pretty mopey anyway, and I we I we're gonna mulligan a lot, so just to make sure we don't get mana screwed. Let's bring in the extra land. The colorless land doesn't cast a lot of our spells anyway, so. Alright, on the play. And we are just really struggling to draw a functional hand. Um Alright, we're gonna mulligan. We do have a discard outlet, but only one land, and no guarantee they'll play it, and they're playing discard spells too, so we're gonna mulligan this one. But I mentioned we're really struggling to find a playable hand here. Uh, opponent ball against the six also. I suppose I could have Leyline of the Void, which would be game ending. Um, that's a card that would not affect their own combo, but. All right, we're gonna mulligan again. All right, uh, this is doable. It's certainly not great. But it's doable. Opponent Mulligan gets to five also. We're going to keep this. We're going to ship Amalgam Smiting Helix, I think. I guess we can ship a land because we are, um, we're going to be loaming anyway. Yeah, let's ship land. I think we're more likely to hard cast Helix than Amalgam anyway. So let's discard the Amalgam. Hard casting Helix, you know, could be on the menu here. All right, no, uh, no ley line of the void. We could have played copper line gorge to give us an opportunity to lightning axe. They have like mother of runes, might have been better, but nope. Thankfully, our hand is pretty Inquis Inquisition proof. Um, we're probably casting a naked loam on two, which kind of sucks. We didn't draw a fetch land. land but not a fetch land scrub land number two and offensa sure so draw step dredge lum we hit land land stinkweed amps pretty good hits actually uh, let's get uh, our two lands back, and we're just going to fetch land to go get our Sacred Foundry and probably hard cast a Smiting Helix next turn. Let's do it. Kept it for a reason, you know. Shambling Vent, sure. Viscera Seer, sure. Double Viscera Seer. All right, so they're running the beatdown plan here. Only have one card left, though, and killing out of fence is a pretty big game, so. Get Sacred Foundry. 
take two. They will be able to fizzle my life gain from uh, the helix, which is kind of annoying. But Dredge Snake Weed Imp hit a Creeping Chill and a Narco Amoeba. All right, folks, here we go. Four mana Smiting Helix. Your turn. So next turn we can Dredge Loam. We've got multiple things for it. We can flash back the Helix. We need to kill something. Did I even sacrifice it? Oh, come on, opponent. What are you doing? Knight's Whisper. This is a brew we're playing against over here. Opponent's brewing up. All right, draw step, dredge loam. Hit a silver smote ghoul. Um, so we could flash back the helix just to return the ghoul, but that seems kind of foolish given that the helix is a really good piece of interaction for us. Like we're just gonna cast stink weed up and cast life from alone, honestly. Let's say Meyer stomping ground scalding tarn. Mountain. Oh yeah, the raw power of stinkweed imp. It is funny that like in some decks just casting Snake Queen of every turn is actually really good. Like, just puts a card in our graveyard to dredge from, kills off their attackers. You know, good against big dumb idiots like Tarmogoyf and things like that. Usually good against Aldrazi, but not when they have, you know, like 14 other pieces as well. So they're gonna sack a Viscerous here and scry. That is aggressive. But they're gonna top. They're gonna top. They get paid off for it. We're gonna find out. Got the shrine untapped. We have a Yagmoth here. Nope, we have a hard cast Leyline of the Void. So we do have Leylines. Uh, opponents are not being very friendly today. But new cards cannot enter our graveyard, but um, cards already there are fine. So we're trying to draw because the point in Loaming here. We draw a Silver Smote Ghoul, which is fine. And I think we're just getting down. We're just gonna attack and then helix them and then play a silver smoke ghoul and just try and kill them. And we're limited to the cards we have available to us. So Lightning Helix U. Cast Silver Smoot Ghoul. All right. I mean, you're up. Yeah, try and cross the finish line here. I mean, Shambling Bank can definitely make that a little difficult for us, but... Safe Hold Elite. Due to Persist. Unless they also have a combo piece here and they just kill us, which would be great. Plus... I think I'm in hell, folks. I think this is, I think I, I've died and I've gone to cool stuff video hell. Are we just dead? Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry, they don't have a way to, Blastization is not a, not a way to loop it, sure. But it is very good against my uh, my Silver Smote Ghouls. So untap, draw. I thought we were dead, I, I was mistaken. So we're gonna attack with everything. And if they go to kill my Silver Smote Ghoul with a Blasting Station, I can sacrifice it and draw a card. Blocking with Safe Hold Elite is interesting because once it persists, it means that it can't combo anymore, right? Is that how, I guess with a bolster combo, you can Fenza. Yeah, that's nothing to do. If it's if it's Vizier of Remedies, you can't, but in which case 
I guess this is fine. No, yeah, you can't because it, it would just die. All right, we're gonna sacrifice it and target this copy of Silver Smoke Ghoul, sure. So we'll sack that, draw a card. Uh, not dredging. Draw an argument with the one card we can't cast. They persist. Blasting station would untap. And take two. This is uh, some game we're playing here. Funny, the shambling vent might actually be the end of us here. We're gonna sack the safe hold elite pre combat. You have like on earth or something like that? No. Well, that's the shambling vent. All right, so they can gain more than we can deal. I guess we need to like. Leave the silver smoke ghoul back. Maybe my attack was a little ambitious. All right, big draw step. Big, big draw step here. Maybe like Ox of Agonis would be a good draw. Blasting Station, Sacking Shambling Vent. There are Ace in the hole. All right, draw off the Ghoul. <laughs> okay. <gasps> Strange, strange. Any of our fetch lands are dead at this point. Sh Sacking the shambling man just is astounding to me. Like. What, what, why? You know, like my anemic 1-1 one, one flyer beatdowns probably can't beat you if you just gain two life a turn. Kitchen Finks, okay. It's not a bad card, I guess. I don't have any more words. I got nothing. They got a ley line. We got a bunch of lands. We're trying to pull this game out of our butt if possible. Um, they already have a sack outlet, so killing Seer doesn't really matter. So let's take two here. All right, big draw step, big draw step, big draw step. Well, listen. It may be land number 15, but it does allow us to cast Nargamua, so beggars can't be choosers. Pawn says BRB. I'll be over here. You know, hanging out. Got my new chair. Good news is, I can give everyone a little bit of, a little bit of a life update here, if you're interested in that. Um, try and keep my more official cool stuff content a little less personal, a little more focused on the content. But um, hey, Pawns just uh, said BRB. So we're working on the new office. It's going to be really, really cool. I'm actually going to be painting the office after this video, um, which is pretty cool. Painting the green screen. I have a new chair here. You can't really see it that well. It's a nice new chair. I have a new desk on the way, uh, new monitor mounts. I'm going to have four monitors set up, uh, new microphone, 
Probably not a new camera. Cameras are really expensive. You have to get like a, a fancy camera, like a DSLR camera. So probably not going to do that. Um, but going to have the green screen set up. This is not a green screen, by the way. This is just the... I'm in the... For those who don't know, we bought a new house two months ago. And it's fixer upper. We've been like cleaning every room, painting every room, updating everything, new kitchen, new and so on and so forth. And it just so happens this is one of the upstairs bedrooms we're using as a temporary office. And the walls just happen to be green. So not actually a green screen wall, but... The downstairs in my office is going to be a real green screen. We purchased the actual uh, chroma key, like like professional studio grade green screen paint, painting the entire wall green. And um, so I can do some cool effects and stuff. And uh, I'm pumped. I'm really excited. We're gonna have a new overlay for my cool stuff videos, new overlay for my stream and everything and my video content. Um, it's gonna be really, really cool. It's gonna be really cool. If I'm looking forward to it, I'm gonna use the new OBS, update everything. And it's gonna be really, really nice. And uh, new microphones, one that's been in the works for a while. People are always complaining my mic is too sensitive and picks up extraneous sounds, doesn't sound sound great, clips sometimes. So getting a brand new fancy microphone. We're getting a nice one. We're getting the Shure. Uh, it's the same microphone I used to use when I was on the radio at WUSB Stony Brook 90.1 FM. I used to do my radio show uh, every Monday, 3 to 5. Say what's radio. But um, yes, yeah, so I'm pumped for the new studio. It's a long time coming. Um it's, it takes time. You know, we've been in this house for two months now and we've just been almost nonstop. You know, Nicole and I have been doing a lot of the work ourselves, you know, going to each room, cleaning, uh, spackling, you know, caulking cracks and spackling holes and sanding and then painting. We have the upstairs almost totally painted and done. Um, and now we're moving to the downstairs, doing that. And while we're doing that, we had an electrician come, redo our box, install some lights, and do a bunch of different, you know, odds and ends around the house. We had central air installed. Um, we had some work done out of the yard. Uh, we're having the kitchen redone. Um, that's been ordered, but not done yet. So it's been a pretty crazy, crazy wild process. You know, this has been a long time coming for us to even get the house. And now we're here, we're doing all this work. And it's, it's really, really great. It's, you know, it's an amazing feeling owning a home. A big thanks to all of you who are watching right now, um, whether you watch my Cool Stuff content, read my articles on Cool Stuff, watch me on stream. Uh, this house is all because of you folks. So seriously, from the bottom of my heart and Nicole and John's heart, my family, thank you all so much for supporting me and watching the stream and stuff. And um, we're really, really happy. But now my phone's back. So we're going to move to our tax debt and we're going to attack with our with our little our little stinkers here. The old stink we didn't. And uh, we're going to play another stinker and try and close this game out and cross the finish line against this lay of the void uh, Persisty combo deck. All right, they're going to sack the Kitchen Finks to shoot my Narco Amoeba and persist and gain some life. These are all things that you can do. I used to play this card back in the day with a uh, Beacon of Creation. In Mirrodin block constructed, if that's uh, you know, if I'm not dating myself, which I probably am. All right, so gemstone mine. Tap for blue, Narc Amoeba. Man, if we draw a conflagrate, we can just like fireball them out, right? We can just have a hundred lands in play. So, or a land off casting Ulamog. But we would, need to, we would need to draw the Case City of Brass or the Case Forgotten Cave. Because we have no other mana producing lands in our deck. All 12 fetch lands. Oh, bless them. They play a Concealed Courtyard. Sure. They attack. Um, we are taking some damage here, but I think this is fine. We have them dead in two turns. Otherwise, I mean, they can sack their creatures to Blasting Station. Man. Oh, man. Safe hold elite. So many Blasting Station shots here. Maybe we should have blocked. I don't know. They're going to deal one to the Narco Amoeba, which maybe should have blocked. We'll see, though. Persist. But yeah, so new house is awesome, and uh, it feels amazing to wake up in a, a house that belongs to us for so long of not having that. So we're very, very happy. A lot of work, though. A lot of work. 
Um, a lot of work, many, many buckets of paint, many, many trips to Lowe's, uh, unbelievable amount of money we spent so far on the central air and so on and so forth. But, um, it's pretty awesome. It's definitely pretty awesome. Untap, big spell. All right. That is a big spell actually. So is there any point in having Scalding Tarn in place? It might as well have it in play, right? Cause it just gets it exiled anyway. So no, because then I can't play an actual land that I drop. I drop Blast Zone. So, all right. So, we're going to Ox and Cannibal Ox here. And let's just draw first and see what our attacks are going to be. I don't know why my triggers, why, why my creatures trigger Blasting Station, but sure. Discard our hand. Uh, we're not dredging life below. Amalgam. Stinkweed Imp. Silver Smoke Ghoul, awesome. Those are all very castable cards. Um, we're going to attack them for sure. Prize the Malgum lines up pretty well against their board of 2-2s two and 2-1s two and so on and so forth. So, Opponent's really milking the camera time here. I've also heard uh, rumors of a piece of software that can edit videos like this um, where it just cuts out the dead space. If nothing is said and nothing's changed on a screen, they just like cut that out. I think I've I've heard that's a thing. I'm not actually sure if it's like a real thing that exists, but look at that. We're doing a lot of improvements in my content overall once we have a, a little more time. Looking forward to that. Play a 3-3, say go. Will it be good enough? Five mana, four, two, three mana, three, three. And they're Viscera Searing to Scry. They bought them. We like to see that. All right, they're just, they're going, they're just going. Bought them again. Um, not really sure what they're drawing to at this point. But whatever it is, they're looking for it. Bought them again, though. And the draw. Here's the payoff. Payoff is a game three, where we can board in our nature's claims for these Leo into the Voids. Um, so maybe we just don't even bother with Lightning Axe. Their combo does seem fairly fragile. Um, all right, let's take out a Merchant. We gotta bring in the three claims, obviously, because we can't beat a Leo into the Void. Shave an Axe. We shave like something can't be a dredge card um it could be like narc amoeba like the helix is actually pretty good kind of stinks because i when i i used to i play i play a lot of dredge in the past and creeping chill was often a card you would cut in matchups that had more hate cards because like it's not really necessary in a longer grind of your game it's better against like combo decks and tron and stuff um, but we can't cut the Creeping Chills through playing our Silver Smoke Ghouls, obviously. So, <laughs> oh, we could Nature's Claim our own Shriekhorn to get him back. That'd be cool. Um, hmm. I guess we're on the draw now. Maybe Blast Zone is just bad. I'm just gonna cut a line on my draw. I'll just cut the Arab Mesa. It'd be a little greedy, I guess. We'll see. We'll see. So, unfortunately, in sideboard games, when your opponent has Leyline or Rest in Peace, there's another piece of the puzzle added to your opening hand where now you need two lands, a Dredge Enabler and a Dredge Card, and a, a way just to deal with Leyline. Especially if they keep seven, which they hopefully won't do. But. It's hands in it regardless, so not much to discuss here. Opponent's really milking this camera time. Opponent keeps seven, which is terrifying. Right, we're gonna mulligan. All right. 
we're going to keep this in. It's not good, but we've got a lot of search. And if they have ley line, we can at least like look for answers. I don't love it, but don't seem to have ley line. So that's good, I guess. It's like a forgotten cave too. So we have cycle on forgotten cave. We draw any dredge card in our first few draws. Our cathartics are insane. So. And if they have a discard spell, I have two cathartics. So. Viscera Seer off a swamp. <laughs> oh, Scrybug. All right, sure. Did we just bottom that card? Really want to draw a dredge card. Got two shots at it. Altar of Dementia, sure. That is a redundant combo piece with the Viscera Seer, right? Cycle Forgotten Gave. Oh, we did it. Oh, let's do it. It's on Donkey Kong. Not as good, but. All right, Cathartic Reunion. We are going to discard Stinkweed Imp. And I would say Ox. Pretty bad draws here, but... Stinkweed Imp. We had an Arco and an Amalgam. Excellent. Stinkweed Imp. Stinkweed Imp. Silver Smote. All right, we got, we, got, we, got, we got good stuff here. That was a good one. Good turn two. As I was trying to say earlier in the... We've been, this video's been going on for an hour and a half already. Cathartic's the best card in the deck. We want to cast it on turn two every game. We've not, not done that very often, but uh, this is why. If you've never seen Dredge in action before, we're going to have uh, 13 power in play on turn two. This is why all you really need. I mean, we mulligan to, what, six? And we drew two blank cards. Um, and our hand's still amazing. So, Anafenza, Okay. Well, now all we need is any persist creature and we lose. So it's always that, I guess. So I mean, we get to cathartic again. If only hit one creeping chill. So we could have them pretty much dead here, I would assume. Unless you get really unlucky. So with Cathartic and two Stinkweed Ames, we can dredge most of our deck, hopefully. Draw step. Got to draw. Um, land is basically worthless. Yeah. All right, you just send the squad. The Seer can block. So we're going to deal 10 here. We're going to hit two of our three. Oh, we would chill on our hand. Ooh, that's gross. Oh, they're blocking both. What is this? What? Right, well, I suppose that removes all fear of uh, us dying next turn, which is good for us. Scribe bottom, bottom, sure. Yeah, I mean, let it rip, like. Dredge five, dredge five, dredge four. All right. I mean, now you have Conflagrate in the graveyard too, so they're dead to Conflagrate, they're dead to our creatures. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Phyrexian Unlife. You've heard this story before. All right, well, the good news is we just, we just, we just killed them anyway, so untap, 
Dredge Loam. Hit another Creeping Chill, sure. And now we just Conflagrate them for two. Then I'll put them to zero and we attack with all of our infect creatures and kill them. Loan back mountain. Um, city cave. Play mountain. Conflagrate you. I only need to do for two, but I guess we'll like do a little more, I guess. I don't, I don't know. If the game can gain life or something. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Puts them to negative three, in which case we attack all of our infect creatures now because of how the Phyrexian Unlife works and get the infect kill for 13 poison. Alrighty, this will be the longest video of all time. Let me tell you, if it's all you know, like graveyard hit we're playing against and the, the pace of play from our opponents, let me tell you. All right, one and two, we're on the board, on the board in what has been a pretty rough league so far. Pretty rough league. We're gonna get back on track though. We're gonna get back on track. Dredge is usually a fast deck once your opponent's playing a lot of uh, a lot of graveyard hate and then things can slow down. This hand's great. We've drawn two lands and a cathartic. We're back on we're back on track here. So we'll play Scalding Tarn first. Just a little like semi bluff on like are we playing a blue deck? Mystic Sanctuary? Maybe they you know play their first turn a little differently. Cavernous Souls. Naming human. Aether Vile. Alright, so there's that new human lore that can be a little annoying, but I think we're in pretty good shape here. Draw for turn. Sacred Foundry. So we're gonna fetch. Um I guess we're gonna shock. I have black build to cast a a stink we have things go wrong next turn. And cast cathartic. We're gonna pitch the imp and an amalgam in an attempt to hopefully get the amalgam back this turn. We hit. Ooh, we missed. So our, we, we dredged five and did not hit another dredge card. Or anything of relevance. Uh, unfortunately, we drew Silver Smoke Ghoul. Which is not ideal. Now our hand's pretty bad. Um, but that's why we got the black source. We can just cast these things we didn't if we have to. Probably still playing Shriekhorn, but it does feel like maybe we're like a hair light on dredge cards. Alright, they got the uh, the old bootski here, which will take our horn. Scalding Tarn. All right. I mean, our options here are actually pretty limited. The good news is we can just tap five lands and cast the Ox of Agonis at some point, and uh, that'll be pretty good for us. But even casting Sneaking is pretty good right now too. So they don't really have much offense, and they only have Reflector Mage to kind of get through with Sneaking. The bad thing would be if they have the uh, the new Black White Lord from. Uh, one of the more recent sets that would exile a graveyard whenever a human came into play. That card's pretty bad for us. Blue and black. Nope. Green. Noble Hierarch, sure. Blue, Aether Vial, sure. Definitely a blast zone matchup for us. Yeah, no, they can't really attack. Like, we just get to hold on to our uh just play an ox next turn. Oh, they're gonna freebooter on the draw step. I'm just gonna miss. It's good for us. We just play Copper Line Gorge and just cast the uh, ox next turn, I guess. I guess we have no dredge cards currently. Which is kind of annoying. So maybe we just play Silver Smoke Ghoul also, which is awkward, but 
one of the downsides to playing Snake Queen is they don't have any dredge things to dredge with, but. Maybe these three booters ain't doing him any favors here. Not really applying heavy beats, not really doing much. They got my Shriek Horn, I suppose, but, you know, it could be worse. Let's see, where should I cast Silver Smoke Ghoul? Play land. Say go. There's an argument towards, towards holding it to discard to the Ox, because it might get back my Amalgams, but with no dredge cards currently, it's possible we're just casting the Ox to try and, like, reload. And we might as well just put the Silver sm Smote Ghoul in play because we're not using our mana anyway, so. I also sack it to, to dredge later on, too. All right. Aether Vials go up. Horizon Canopy. What's up, Bonnet? Blue in the pool for human. Like a Reflector Mage on Snake Weed would be their way to break through, but actually very good for us because we can just discard it to the Ox, so... That's a problem. So the melee mage named the ox that makes our hand pretty bad. All right. This is a very strange game here. Um, definitely not operating the way we normally would want to. They chose life from alone. That's crazy. Not a bad name in a vacuum, but they saw our hand. They know we have the ox. Heh. <laughs> That's, that's a good draw, though, because we will now have a dredge card, so... Um, send in Silver Smoke Ghoul. It's important to note, too, that you, you cast the Ox from your graveyard with Escape, so the... Melee Mage on Ox is actually pretty good from both sides. All right, so play the Ox, discard my hand, and hope our Dredge does some good stuff for us, honestly. It's only Dredge 3, but... Eh, that's a hit. Stinkweed and Dark Blast, wow. Stinkweed Imp, Narc Amoeba, and Dark Blast. Creeping Chill. All right, so that's the world. So everything just came up Millhouse for us, which is obviously very nice. There's your Chill. There's your Narco, there's your Amalgams, there's your, your everything. So you're already holding on pretty good, but now we are uh, officially online. Also, they have the... All right. Whew. They had the general there. I guess they'd only exile one thing anyway, but... They're going to bounce the Stinkweed Imp, which is fine. They're at 11. We have used two of our four Creeping Chills. We still have two Smiting Helixes as well. And Dark Blast, too. So Can't cast Life from Alone, but we can like upkeep Dark Blast and dredge that. One red. Let's take a little Mantis Rider action. Sure. I mean, they kind of like have to have a, a Thalia's, Thalia's Lieutenant here. Which they do not appear to. So. so we are attacking for a lot next turn. All right, so we could cast Dark Blast 
and then dredge it on our draw step. We can't cast it again until we have one black. Um, I think I'm fine just taking a natural draw here. So also we can use Dark Blast in combat. They chose to tap mana to cast this and still have Vial on three, so another Reflector Mage or something like that could be a possibility. Um, so I don't hate the idea of having Dark Blast available or just casting Stink Weed Imp. So I can't... Wait. When do they bounce the Imp? I can cast the Imp, I think. So let's just draw. That's... Uh, not black source number two. Our blood grip's already gone, but all right, we can cast the imp. So just get to combat here. I'm gonna leave back the narco because it can block the mantis rider. It also just gets eaten by a, a freebooter for free. So all right, what's the uh? What's the shot here? We got another Reflector Mage. A Kessig Malcontents, which will fireball us for seven. That's a lot. That might be the end of us. Um, we can kill the Malcontents in response. Yeah. Does turn off our ability to... Uh, to um, Cast Stink Weed Imp, but we already have the Narco to block. And I think it's just like, it's, just, it's a minus one block for them and then minus one uh, damage on the trigger. So take six and then we have a decent amount of attackers that need to be dealt with here. If Medley Mage dies, we have to cast Life Malone and get back our uh, Forgotten Cave and some stuff and Gemstone Mine and I, I put this pre-combat, that was stupid. I should not have done that. In my mind, the life, the life from alone was, was blank, but obviously it could begin to end up mattering, so... That's a strange block. I mean, if they had the lieutenant, they would have done it already, so this is pretty weird. I guess they don't want the ox to die, that makes sense. Okay, sure. So they're at two, we're at nine. Uh, we can now cast Loam. And we can actually dredge Dark Blast too. All right, cool. So sweet. Works for me. And now we got a sideboard. And uh, they can have Graph Digger's Cage, but not much else usually because they can't obviously play non creature spells for the most part. So we're going Blast Zone. I kind of like the Ancient Grudge. So it still has some value against Vials. And we can just dredge into it. I don't think I want Claims in the Dark. They could have Cage, but they might not. I don't want these Lightning Axes for sure. We get to cut uh, the Merchants, because now we're playing Lightning Axe instead. And cut an Ox. And cut... I got two more cards. Smiting Galax is pretty good. Um, so I definitely don't love the idea of cutting that one. Dark Blast also good. Maybe we'd be, maybe we'd be a little greedy here and cut a land. Just bringing in the Blast Zone. Smiting Helix just seems so good. We can't cut a Smiting Helix. Um, what else is there to cut, though? I guess we have we could cut like a Shriekhorn, maybe because we already have a Lightning Axes. But I guess I guess Cathartic's also bad against Thalia because we're on the draw and they can play Thalia before I can cast Cathartic. It's like the best card in the deck, though. It's really really hard to cut Cathartic. All right, we're gonna cut a Smiting Elix. I don't love it, but I'm not sure what else to do. Why is there a Leyline of the Void just like floating around? Oh, it's, it's, it's in my sideboard, right? I must have moused over it. Just like, hey, hey Jim, Leyline of the Void, in case you were wondering. That's a hand. Uh, so again, a five card hand here. Worse than a five card hand because these are these are in our hand, not in our deck. Uh, this hand's pretty bad. We're gonna mulligan. Point of mulligans also. So that's a lot better. Um, it, doesn't have, it doesn't have a a card draw spell, but we have dark blast and loam. Putting back the narco. I like this a lot. 
Dark Blast is so good on turn one that it's uh, I think it's worth it. Let's ship this. Loam is pretty good against Cage too, because you can still just like keep loaming stuff back and drawing cards and so on and so forth. So Canopy. All right, well, there's your Gravedigger's Cage, but they only have three cards left, so. I'm going to play Blood Crypt tapped. Um, we could shock and have Dark Blast available, but it just literally tells them, hey, I have Dark Blast, and I'd rather be able to just cast it. We're in no rush here. Uh, they're on... <laughs> Alrighty then. Uh, they have two cards left. So we have we only have one ancient grudge. We do have our um our blast zone, which would obviously be very good here. If we wanted to start loaming, but we're gonna just play Shriekhorn and leave up Dark Blast. Double graft diggers game. Really, just the haters are out in full force, you know? This is the mass riders could be trouble for us. We just cast anyway, never right? Mirren Crusader. Alright, that's actually a problem. Um Conflagrate is our only answer to this card. I mean, if you're gonna have a five card hand, this seems like a pretty good five card hand. Double hate card and card I can't kill. Uh alright. Narco Amalgam. So Stone Cold Nuts, but it doesn't do anything because they have cages in play. Um, I guess I would Dredge, so we'll just hit it. So we want to start building our lands for Loam. All right, we'll Dredge Loam. Lightning Axe. Oh, we, 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 do, we do have Lightning Axe to kill the Crusader also. And the with the one conflagrate we're kind of like digging towards. All right, we have one land in the graveyards. So not idea. We're, we're, uh, the the whole point of milling there and dredging was to try and hit more lands, which unfortunately we were not able to do. Um, pro black, pro green. Champion of the Parish. All right, so we have to kill this Champion of the Parish. It's painful, but... And if, uh, let's see what they name here. If they name Lightning Axe or Conflagrate. They chose Loam again. Interesting. Um, all right. We are just going to draw. Because now Loam doesn't matter and our graveyard doesn't matter. So just draw. I guess we can't cast Complicate. Duh, I'm being stupid. Um, all right. This is pretty awkward. Anything but Mirror Crusader, you know? So you have to just like draw Conflagrate or draw a Lightning Axe or draw Blast Zone. That's where we're currently at. So we are dead in, I guess, four turns. Meddling Mage again. So first one named Loam. What's this one gonna name? Conflagrate. All right, so we have two Lightning Axes in our deck. Oh, we can dredge Dark Blast. 
and then cast Dark Blast and then like cast it, upkeep, draw it, cast it again, but we're not gonna do that yet. Another Shriek Horn. All right. Um, I don't see a reason to cast Shriek Horn. I'm just gonna say go. we can't draw Ancient Grudge either because we can cast it, but we can't flash it back. Oh, man. Aether Vile, sure. Tough Tony. Tough Tony's tough. Tries the Malagum. Well, that doesn't do much either. Um, all right, you're up, tough Tony. Going to one. Big draw step. <laughs> that doesn't do it though. I thought this was buying his turn, but it was actually one short of buying his turn. All right, so pretty uh, pretty tough game there. I mean, a couple lands, two Graphic Cage, and Mirror Crusader is like pretty ideal. But, okay. Um, so the problem is like, I don't even want to bring in the, nature, the Nature's Claims because they only typically play two cages. They just happen to draw both of them, it feels like. We have Blast Zone, too. And the claim is just completely unplayable. I guess we could, like, claim our own Shriekhorn to gain some life and bring back the Silver Smoots, but... All right, let's like, bring in, like, a claim or two and then cut they've been naming loam a lot but we can't like i mean kind of dredge guys they've been like really aggressively naming loam and metal image every time so maybe we shave a loam and shave like either an amalgam or a silver smoke ghoul Could shave a creeping chill. I'm gonna shave a shriek horn. No, let's save a. I don't even know. Shave a narkin move. It's nice to block Manus Rider, but. You know, let's try this. Let's try this. Yes, going first. That's that's some end, let me tell you. Alright, I'm all again. Alright, that's a lot better. Keep this. Ship City of Brass. And we want two lands, the axe. I think we got the horn too. Let's ship the silver smoke ghoul. All right. Pretty good hand here. Pretty good hand. Play the horn and say yep. And then we can upkeep lightning axe, discarding the thug if we need to. We're missing like the, the big draw effect to kind of like get the really big dredge going, but. Carousel's human green noble hierarch. Creeping chill ox of Agonis. Cool. It's actually really good. It's like our that's our big draw effect. I don't think I 
Lightning Axe to Noble Hierarch, though. That just seems kind of loose. I guess we'll see if we hit a dredge card or not. We do want to dredge this turn. I guess if, if we miss here, we're, we're going we're gonna to go for it. We had an Amalgam and a Copper Line Gorge. Yeah, we're just going to go for it. Now that we have Ox to work towards, we just have to dredge as soon as possible, I think. So. Thug hits Conflagrate and another Ox and a Loam. Which is okay. I mean, not great, but... All right. I mean, don't cage me. Metal Mage on Ox would also be very good. We have Conflagrate, though, so... Thalia, not a problem. Um, we're going to hit the Shriekhorn. Trying to find a better, a better card than Loam to hit. Horn and Cathartic. Alright, so Dredge Loam. There's a Narco Amoeba. Is that a Dark Blast too? Yes, it is. All right, we're just gonna ship the ox here. So we gotta remove eight cards. We're gonna have to remove some cards that are have have graveyard value, but um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you have amalgam, dark blast, loam, conflagrate as our remaining cards. Um, it's, it's bigger. The Amalgam's coming back, so we need to keep that one. Conflagrate's obviously good with a Loam. We need, we need two more cards, though. Might be Conflagrate, Loam. Keep the Amalgam and the Dark Blast. It's only Loam, so we have a Loam, so... One more card. Conflagrate, Dark Blast, or Amalgam. Although Conflagrate's obviously very good. Although we can't even cast Loam yet, so... Because they have a Thalion play. Yeah, we're going to hit the Conflagrate. Which really sucks, but... So we're leaving the Amalgam and the Dark Blast. Dredge 4. And a Creeping Chill. Dredge 3 on Dark Blast. Silver Smoke. 3 on Loam. Creeping Chill Sneak Weed Up. Okay, so pretty good. Not a bad turn, uh, turn three here. And uh, your turn. Get back the Smote and the Amalgam. It's pretty good. Those are also at 11 from our, our chills. Manus Rider is no problem here at all. Yeah, this game is uh, pretty good for us now. We just Dark Blast the Thalia, get in for a whole bunch. We're also at 29 life, because Creeping Chill is a very silly card. Um, Stretch 5 on the Imp. Pretty blank, but that's okay. Dark Blast Thalia. Send him a squad, and this is a lethal attack because they have to block, and then things just get really ugly for them. Yeah, it's just game. So, all right. Pretty ugly game, too, there, but uh, still going here. Now we're two and two. This has been a very, very challenging league for a number of reasons. Um, pretty unbelievable amount of mulligans and graveyard hate and stuff like that. But we're still two, two. We're still two, two. I'm going to try and come back with a winning record here. It's been a long league. A lot of uh, opponents. Up and out. And I guess the, the graveyard hate games do take a really long time, so. We'll see. That could definitely seems sweet. I mean, the rule with dredge is if people are people are playing a lot of dredge and it's doing well, you often don't want to play it. Didn't really think we were at that point yet. I mean I, I 5 0 with this deck two days ago and um it felt really awesome. So Magic Online does work pretty quick in that, um, you know, that people react pretty quickly, but.
on the draw. Match five. Trying to take it down. Get a winning record. Get some play points back. Sit here and wait a little longer. All right, so pretty easy mulligan here. Again, we have two cards we want to be back in our deck. We have no way to discard or draw or anything, so mulligan. Uh, same exact hand, basically, mulligan again. We also just have not been able to find the card Cathartic Reunion, like, at all. Like, it's been pretty embarrassing. So we're on five here with two fetch lands and a loam. I think we're going to keep this hand. Uh, I don't love it, but... If it's a grindy matchup, two fetch lands, a loam, an ox, and a silver smoke ghoul is pretty good. Um, if it's a more broken matchup, hopefully we'll draw a cathartic. You know, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to four here. I don't think. If I knew the, if we knew the matchup, I had more information maybe. But snow covered mountain. So burn is typically a. Really, All right, saddle up. Let's go. I don't like to recall a more demoralizing league than this one. But yeah, we're two and two, you know, so just game one, turn one relic. Snow-covered mountain. Means we're probably playing Blood Moon also, uh, which makes our alone bad too. This could be fairly difficult for us. Ah. <sighs> I find in content creation, people tend to really enjoy when you're suffering. So this is probably going to be one of my best videos of all time. This is adorable. So I get to Mind Stone, so I'll have mana up for a relic. It's cute. Um, if I stack the tar, they just tap the relics. So I guess we just like, I mean, we, we would get a green. I guess we have to, because we need to get a green land anyway, so... Might be some merit just conceding and not revealing our deck. But I think at this point it would be kind of obvious what we're playing, so. Also kind of like to see more of our deck. It's probably just like a spread red Blood Moon deck, but. Our only basic is a mountain. So uh, Blood Moon is definitely pretty solid against this. Copper Lion Gorge. Maybe we just mire and then loam back the mire. They get to just like tap the relic to eat the loam, but like I, I I don't know what else we're doing here. We're like probably just hard casting silver smoke ghoul at some point. So we get a black source. It's also very possible they have Blood Moon us next turn, which means our loan is worthless anyway. But I guess we can't wait. If they Blood Moon us, we each can't, can't win. We gotta cast like just a like hard cast Ox of Agonis and hope that's good enough, but. Blood Moon is weird against Dredge because it doesn't turn out the most important cards like Cathartic Reunion and it doesn't stop the best hands, but. um. In the games where you're trying to grind, it is very effective. Alright, I mean... I guess this is a pretty good hand against Stretch. Oh, man. Cough of the Hammer. It does kill pretty quickly. Even untaps the land for Relic, too. Gross. Oh, man. Now what? Play Stormbreak Dragon. Just do it. No? Tapping three red. 
Oh, they are going to play Snorkel Dragon. Do it. Do it, opponent. Not just Bone Brusher Giant. Sure. All right, well, they get to ultimate their Koth next turn, which we can't really beat. They get an Emblem and all of our Mountains tap for uh, one damage. So if we draw land for Ox here, it's like we're doing much, and they still have mana for Relic anyway, so... All right, yeah, so... Yeah, they were dead. All right, so pretty tough game there. I mean, that would be an ideal draw in a post-sideboard game, let alone a game one. Um, all right. I mean, they're probably not a Chalice deck because they're probably a Scred deck. So we need to bring in, like, Blast Zone, Grudge Claims... No basic forest, kind of a tilt, but take out Dark Blast, Smiting Helix, Ox of Agonis. Maybe just the other Smiting Helix, just batting its Blood Moon. And maybe like... Merchant feels like one of the worst cards in the deck. I'll just cut them. I guess we can we can cast Merchant through Blood Moon. So like we need to be aware of Blood Moon because we can't always claim it because if they obviously once they cast it, we can never cast a claim. Um, so makes me a little inclined to just like keep the Ox in our deck too, just a hard cast. I don't really want to cut another Dredge card. Probably have Anger of the Gods too. Jeez. <laughs> Could bring in Thoughtseize, I guess, but oh man, I think on the play we can just like have a good hand. This turn one relic can't beat turn two cathartic, so maybe we just like go for it in game one or on on the play, and then we'll we'll reevaluate for game three in the draw if we uh, if we lose this game. So let's um, you know, just like take these out. And not even bother blast zone, just do it. Let's try this. We'll just just please draw a cathartic reunion. It's like the best card in our deck. We mulligan five times a match. Like we just, just want to cast it on turn. And we've cast it on turn two like three times already. Nope. So easy mulligan. Just two bricks. Uh, so one lander, we're going to mulligan again. We have a horn, but nothing else really. So opponent also mulligans to six. We're going to mulligan to five. There it is. See? Life is good. Keep this. We're going to ship the smote and a land. We're just going to... Ship the stomping ground. We'll just fetch stomping ground if we have to. It gives us the option to like fetch tapped or untapped. All right. I mean, opponents on six cards. The sand is all we'd ever want, realistically. If they have a Tormod script or something, we have a claim too. So they have Relic again. Um. Yep. All right, big cathartic here. Here we go. Big money. Second stink we have. Let's go. That's fine, too. Let's do this. Dredge five. Dredge four. All right, good. Not amazing, but good. Um, didn't get the third dredge. We get an amalgam. So we have some stuff in play, and we're not like super soft to anger of the gods just yet. Just not too bad, I guess. Um, we have a grudge. We have an ox, but that's pretty all in against. Maybe we could, we could just. We say like we can't be super soft to. Uh, to anger either. Huh. 
Okay. Yeah, all right. Well, prize amalgam and narcomy. Narcomy, we get some work to do, right? I, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, let's go. Um, I don't think we're going to play around Anger of the Gods because... Like, just screw it. Right? Hold on. They wouldn't just cast Anger for these two creatures on 24 life. It's obviously a really awesome rebuild. We could just like cast Olari Thug, play land and say go. All right, maybe we'll do that. Two relics down. <laughs> um, we're gonna just crack the fetch. Uh, it doesn't matter color wise. It marginally increases our dredges probability wise. I think that's worth one point of damage. So. That's actually kind of good. Because, like, I want to hold the Cathartic. I don't want to fully commit because they have Anger. But we can Merchant and discard the Stinkweed Imp, dredge some cards, still have Cathartic available next turn, but I'll still make some moves. Um, and then also Merchant, we can, like, we can, like, cast that later, too. Let's just do it. All right. Brick City, but it's fine. Put them to 15. Let's see how they want to deal with my board here. Frostwalk Bastion, aka Snow Covered Mountain. Mindstone. I'm feeling an anger here. They got an anger? Frostlock Bashing is a cool card. Stomp on the Golgari Thug? What a strange play. Oh, the Thug can target itself? I didn't know that. That kind of sucks. So we're drawing a Thug next turn. All right, um, I'm still holding out here. So we're going to draw Thug. We're going to attack for four and cast the Merchant. I'm still, I still feel like we, we can play around Anger of the Gods. And they don't have anything. Merchant can also slow dredge too, so every it can just keep casting Haggle over and over again, which is kind of cool. All right, I would say they definitely don't have anger, man. Casting anger and then casting bone crusher, like this is the turn they would do it if they had it. So I'm gonna save it. I don't think they have it anymore, um, and I might just go for it. We'll see what we draw, but. Hmm. That's not a bad rebuild either, actually. So if they do have it, we can still rebuild. Um, yeah, we're going to attack and just cast Cathartic post-combat. We're going for it. Dredge five. Dredge five. Dredge four. <coughs> I 
<coughs> excuse me, sorry. All right, so you show me your anger of the gods. You show me what you got, all right? So all my stuff's in play. We've been through only one creeping chill also, so. They cast anger, we've got a bunch of looks of creeping chill. We have Ox, too. We just dredge our entire deck. Take that double relic, Blood Moon. Oh, man. We are really... We're working overtime in this league, let me tell you. All right. So, now we're on the draw. Let me just leave it. I think you just leave it. We have four answers to relic. Thoughtseize can't even hit a relic, and like hitting a blood moon is kind of lame anyway, so just do it. Just do it. Here we go. Come on. <laughs> Bonnet keeps seven. Mulligan. Alright, we're gonna keep we can't mulligan this hand. Um we'll ship a land. They have a relic, things get awkward, but we can like sandbag one stinkweed amp and just try and make it work. <sighs> All right, that's actually a pretty good draw. It's a pretty good draw. Get stamping ground. Play Shriek Horn, there you go. Try and force this relic if we can. <laughs> Alright. Fill two cards, Amalgam Blood Crypt, sure. Actually, I think I just, they just punted big time. Because now they don't have any mana to... Unless they have a spirit guide in their hand. They can't activate the relic. We are not playing around Simeon Spirit Guide. We're going for it. We're going for Broke, folks. I'm taking a mountain. I guess I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't get some Nogam, then. All right, whatever. Just, I, I want the gems on mine available. I don't want to burn it. I don't think our life total matters that much, so... You show me your spirit guide, all right? You show it to me. You discard the amalgam or the imps. And we're, we're going to hold the amalgam, I think. Go for the bigger dredge. Go for the bigger dredge shot, and then also have the amalgam back up if they have a like an anger or something. Dredge five. Dredge five. Brick. But also kind of hit. So we get back a silver smote and then amalgam on their end step, which is kind of cool because they have anger. I was I was not a good upgrade. Taking shields down on relic just seems crazy. I guess I get the, I guess hit the amalgam. I, I, that's bad. Never mind. So it's plays on anger, but not around the actual relic that they have already. All right, they have a bolt too. All right. And they got four cards left, but we're going to be casting some creatures, so we'll see if that is good enough. Silver Smote Ghoul. Go do something. The Lightning Bolt in their deck. So no anger of the gods, no bone crusher giant. <laughs> we get it. 
All right, we understand. We're all like a We 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 get we get the joke. I don't find it funny anymore. I'm not laughing. Um. Hmm. Do we dare jam the amalgam into a possible anger of the gods? Do we just play stinkweed imp and try and push through over two turns? I think I like that better. Ooh, that's that's that complicates things. Okay, maybe we can't win anymore. Um, we can sack this silver smoke if they block, but I don't know if we can actually still win. Our ancient grudges are gone. Oh man, our ancient grudge is gone. I mean. <sighs> I gotta be two relics and a Bane Slayer Angel. <laughs> um, I mean, we can like block with Silver Smote and like deny the lifelink, but I just don't know how we're winning because it is Vigilance also. We could deal four here, but it's just not good enough. Um, I guess we're gonna just block and sack and try and draw a Nature's Claim or something like that. Definitely does not feel good. Please stop playing things. Oh my god. Chandra Awakened Inferno. Well, I think that's it for us. Yeah, that's it for us, folks. We couldn't beat Double Relic in three games. We just couldn't do it. We tried. We tried our best. Now we have to these creatures on top. Oh my god. Why are you like this? Sure. That's a terrible play. So we're gonna exile the card that we put on top. So we don't have to put it on top anymore. That's awesome. And maybe draw like some way out of this. Stretching's not gonna do it. We gotta find a draw a way to kill. We gotta draw like exactly nature's claim. And then also find some way to win. We just can't beat this batter skull, realistically. If they were at nine, we could hit like three chills. Maybe we just go for it, but that's not gonna do it. All right, folks. Thanks. I think I think that's the end for us here. Once I get to untap, they can protect protect the batter skull and bounce it and just get it back again. Man, this was the league from hell. Um, I don't think I've ever faced so much adversity in a, a single league, let alone a coolstuffinc.com video. Um, this deck must look so bad, but I, I promise you it's not. It's very, very good. Um, I went 5-0 with this deck on stream uh, a few days ago. That was just an unbelievable amount of graveyard hate and an unbelievable amount of mulligans, too. This deck definitely mulligans. I would say a deck like this averages probably five mulligans a match. You know, maybe like two in game one, one in game two, two in game three. We were way over that mark, and... We just couldn't draw the card Cathartic Reunion. This is like the one card you want in every opening end. You cast this card on turn two, you're, and it resolves with a dredge card in your hand. Your, your, your win percentage is probably like 70% or something like that, you know, just based on that alone. And we just couldn't do it. I mean, just nothing worked at all this league. 
we we weren't working. Uh, our opponents were working really hard against us. We still went two three. I mean, we almost went you know three two there. They didn't have that batter skill, but um, deck's really really good. I'm not completely convinced about the configuration. Um, missing the looting really sucks. You know, Merchant of the Veil is like not a very exciting card. Um, and I think we're maybe like a little light on Dredgers and a little heavy on Ox. Even though Ox is really really good, like second Ox doesn't do very much. Um, so mining helixes were good. Grave, uh, sideboard seems pretty good, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, that was just a leak from hell. That's all I got for you. Um, I think it's like still quite good, but as usual, your strategy with dredge is play it when they aren't expecting it. And apparently today they were expecting it. So I don't know who put the call out, let everyone know I was playing dredge today, but they got me good. They got me good. So I am Jim Davis for CoolStuffInc.com. That's this week's video. Uh, free content every day on every week, every weekday on coolstuffinc.com. I do a video article Monday, a written article on Friday. And, um, yeah, also go to coolstuffinc.com for your game shopping needs. Go get your core set 2021 cards, your jumpstart cards, uh, promo code Jim5, 5% off your order and a free Jim Davis Goblin token. Again, promo code Jim5, 5% off your order and a free Jim Davis Goblin token. Thanks for watching everyone. I really appreciate it. And, uh, we're like set to have good luck for the next like three weeks because we got all the bad luck out of the way in this one for sure. So thanks for watching everyone. Be safe out there and uh, whew, glad that one's over. Thanks for watching everyone. Let no one say that I curate my content and only put the good leagues on. All right. Whew. Thanks everyone. Have a good one.